This is our, our Saturday morning cartoons uh, show where we watch forgotten cartoons, mostly from the 80s, but uh, we'll get to the 90s eventually. I'm joined by Joe, George, and Caitlin Hi. McGurk from the Billy Ireland Cartoon Library and Museum is back. Thanks for having me. Is that a new painting behind you, Caitlin? It's a, it's a beautiful giant piece by Vanessa Davis, the cartoonist. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. That's cool. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, nice. And I like your uh, festive pajamas. You're very festive. And, it's a onesie. And it's yeah. one of my many, many, many onesies that I wear <laughs> over the holidays. So Nice, like nice. A, another one for the next episode. We'll see. It's Christmas season. And we should mention that we're doing all Christmas episodes of cartoons through December. And we're doing the Dukes of Hazard today. The Dukes, specifically, is what it's called. The, the animated version. That beloved cartoon that we all grew up oh, watching and loving. Forget? And referencing, we still reference it. It's an important cartoon. It is. So I'm glad we're canonizing it on our series. What's everybody rocking for cereal today? I got Fruit Loops. Tried and true. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm surprised Fruit Loops haven't come up yet in the, in this series. That seems like an old standard, you know? I think somebody rocked some Fruit Loops, didn't they? I think I had it in my um, in my oh, in suicide. suicide. Where you mixed them all together? Yeah. I found I've been pretty loyal to the cinnamon toast crunch family. I've had chocolate toast crunch, churro toast crunch. Look what I found at Target over the weekend. Sugar toast, sugar cookie toast crunch. And I haven't tried it yet, but I just based on the reputation of the CT crunch family, I'm guessing it's going to be good. And it's family size, too. So it's enough for your whole family. Your whole family will enjoy that then. Yeah, Marty and me. You should see my cupboards. It's just all sugary cereals. I had Airbnb beers in here like a couple weeks ago, and they just must have thought, among other things, that I was nine years old. Well, do you have diabetes yet? What's the what's the diabetes? I'm trying to. By the end of this series, I'm hoping to get it. Okay, this that's delicious. our goal. This is delicious, by the way. Caitlin, what are you eating? I have to be honest, we didn't have cereal in the house, but I did have a bowl of leftover Halloween candy. <laughs> and I might pour some milk on it. We'll see. Oh, that's, basically, like, that's basically what I'm eating anyway. I mean, this is right? short cookie yeah. based cereal, so yeah. <laughs> you should actually unwrap each one of those and then pour some milk over it. That would actually be kind of good. <laughs> Probably do. I will do it. Yeah, okay. I will. All do right. it because I have a feeling you're going to need a break during this cartoon. Um, <laughs> And George, what do you have? I have Cheerios. A classic. Mm, kind of, kind of boring, George. Not, Not even like... a honey nut in there. What's up? Not even a honey nut in there. You got any honey it, nut? It said on the box there's one hidden in there, but I haven't gotten it yet. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a fun surprise. There's one honey nut Cheerio. You're like, ooh, there it is. <laughs> well, uh, let's start off with a cereal commercial. This seems to be the tradition, and. Uh, this is one that I remembered very well from uh, 1987. Season three, season three, season three. Yummy fruity pebbles in apples. Oh, oh, here comes you know who. Yabba dabba fruit, delicious too. Oh, 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 I'm uh, hungry. Said that my pebbles. Your pebbles? Tis the season to be sharing, Fred. Happy holidays, pal. Oh, Fred. Fruity and Cocoa Pebbles cereals, part of this nutritious oh, breakfast. Oh, oh. That was sweet. Oh, it got Fred. Along. Yeah, yeah. there's a genuine touching moment there. And I think it was one of those commercials like where somebody's always trying. We've talked about this. Somebody's always trying to steal the delicious cereal mm -hmm. of somebody else. Yeah. And Barney and Fred are best friends. You'd think they would not, that Barney wouldn't always be scheming to steal Fred's pebbles. And, and Barney makes it a living, too. He has an income. Like, why can't he just buy his own? Why does he always have to borrow Fred's if he loves it so much? They both that work at the gravel pit. I mean, they should have enough quarry money to buy their own. You're right. Is he wearing, like, a skimpy Santa 
dress in that? Did Sexy you Santa. Reminded, I want to see this. Yeah, looks like when, bring it back up. When Santa shows up, you're saying that? Yeah, Barney. Like a like a sexy little uh, like a sexy Just thing. Back a little bit. What's no go to, towards the end? <laughs> okay. Oh, there. Yeah, yeah. Right, Nick, right move, there. Nick, move the. Keep move going. The yeah. Look oh, at that. Oh yeah. Hello. Ooh. You can see his, like at the tops of his thighs a little bit later. It, it looks like he's like, looking. <laughs> Santa like he's gonna, baby. That's what I was going to say. It looks like he's going to sing Santa Baby. <laughs> it is. That's a pretty sexy Barney. Yeah, showing his off, off his gams there. Um, ho, ho, ho. I'm ha, ha, hungry. I always I still think about that to this I'm day. Ha, ha, hungry. Whenever I hear, you're a Pebbles fan, right, Caitlin? Oh yeah, big yeah, you rock those in the past. No, I think I think first episode you were rocking some pebbles. Yes, yes, I think every time I've eaten. <laughs> those are they, they are a good cereal. You've rocked the pebs. They are. No. Good. Let's talk about the Dukes of Hazard because this is a cultural. Do we have to? <laughs> yes, because I'm fascinated by the series. I want to talk about Barney's outfit. Yeah, well, we can. <laughs> we can always go back to that. But the uh, I know my history, and I've talked to Joe about this. Was uh, my family didn't watch action shows. And I remember everybody, the kids in school, talking about Dukes of Hazard. It ran from 1979 to 85. And the kids in school would talk about it and play Dukes and Hazard out at recess. And I asked my parents if I could watch it. My dad said, no, that's a stupid show. So I never watched it. I was, I mean, I, through osmosis, I know about it. But what's was everyone your, else's experience? Was your dad one of those Midwestern elitists? Like why? Why did what did he say the show? Well, was stupid I was for? thinking about that because we didn't watch Hee Haw. I mean, I think he thought that was stupid too. So maybe he just didn't like Southern comedy. You know, maybe <laughs> there was a bias against that. So he um, was a Wisconsin elitist, one of those Wisconsin elitists. Yeah, one of those uh, Great Lakes coastal elites. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know. We just didn't watch Knight Rider, A Team, or any of that. What about you guys? Did you watch uh, Dukes? We didn't. No, we didn't watch Dukes. We didn't watch Knight Rider. I, I, I'm at the same boat, but I don't think it was by choice. I think it was just like, I don't know. We had our shows and we stuck to them. It was all comedy. We were a comedy family. George, you're around our age. Did you watch Dukes? I found it offensive on um, uh, on the grounds of, of, well, I was a coastal elitist from um, the East Coast, and I consider that like flyover country and I can't get down with moonshine or any of that. I, I, I Rural, just, I Georgia? couldn't. Come on, they may have saved this last election now, but yeah, oh. I, I get it. What did, now, oh, Caitlin, this is before your time, but what was your cultural awareness of Dukes of Hazard? Very little. Very little? <laughs> what about the movie? Remember, the, like, uh, was Johnny yeah. Knoxville on that? Jessica I mean, Simpson? I generally, generally know what it is. I feel like what they maybe, what did they drive an El Camino or something? But like, that's, that's maybe the extent of my knowledge. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, and the, I remember the Confederate flag on the side of the car, too. Yeah. The, like too. George was hinting at, the show is problematic because of the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the car, the general, it's called the General Lee, you know, and it had a Confederate flag on the roof. And they it also played Dixie. The first, they had a custom horn that would play, and you know, it'd play the, the Dixie song. So there's a lot of, you know, potentially racism triggering things in, in the, the, the series, the cartoon less so. But I'll, it was, say, I'll say this to defend it though. One mm -hmm. of the best intro theme songs, Waylon Jennings. Just yes. the old boys. That's a great intro. That's a great thing. It was number one on the country charts for weeks in 1980. And he was also the narrator of the series, Waylon Jennings. So there'd be a freeze frame on the car jumping off a dirt ramp. It'd be like, well, about that time, the Duke boys were headed to Uncle Jesse's farm, you know, and it would he would kind of narrate the show. So it always felt kind of like a, a fable. And I'll say this, even though I didn't watch it, I get the appeal because and it was one of the top rated shows in the country for most of its airtime. It was about two cousins, Bo and Luke. Uh, Bo was the blonde one, uh, played by John Schneider. Luke was the brown haired one, Tom Wopat, who's from Wisconsin, by the way. And my friend and, Bob uh, babysat him. Oh, really? really? Yeah. My, his parents lived down the street from my parents. Really? Not to, not to drop names. I don't want to drop names, show, show off yeah. like a coastal elite here. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. So we've got some connections to Wopat, and uh, <laughs> and uh, so they. You guys, got, you guys got any Wopat connections? No. Oh, John Schneider, certainly. You got some connections to John Schneider. Get him on the show. We could. He's a country. I think they both had country oh. music careers for a while. I'd rather get his parents on the show. That's my connection. Is his parents? I want to get his parents on. I yeah, I think the show should. 
The show should be hosted by Caitlin Rambo and Tom Wopat's parents. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take a week off. I don't mind. Yeah. <laughs> then we'd finally get a sponsor. <laughs> so yeah, they it wasn't El Camino. It was a 1969 uh, Dodge that they drove. That they, it was custom built. The the Sorry. thing I remember about it was that it was a former race car. So the windows or the uh, doors were welded shut. So they had to slide in through the windows, which always kind of seemed cool in the promos. And uh, they would uh, they were on probation for a moonshine operation. So they couldn't leave the fictional Hazard County, Georgia. And then Boss Hogg was the main antagonist, and he and uh, the sheriff, um, was it, yeah, Roscoe P. Coltrane and his hound dog, they uh, were always up to schemes. Boss Hogg was scheming, and Joe? I, I uh, have a connection to Roscoe P. Coltrane. <laughs> I, was at a, I was at a wedding, Steve's wedding, Steve Lawrence's wedding, uh, and his wife's cousin is the daughter of Roscoe. And I talked to her the entire evening about being Roscoe's daughter. Whoa. Wow. So, yeah, true story. This is going to be some rich experience watching this. <laughs> See, that's why we had to do this episode, because we have uh, third or fourth degree connections to a lot of the people involved. So, I'm, I'm so close to this series. Um, <laughs> and the other thing I remember about it is they didn't use guns because they're on probation, so they would use compound bows with a flaming with arrows that exploded things so they would shoot it into barrels and they, they would explode an outhouse selling, i believe yeah that's one right famous episode you're really selling the show actually Everything i mean sounds awesome the show, ton, so. tons of and is a, people who are car lovers like that because they had all these cool souped up cars and stunts and it was like you know the blues brothers where they're just car crashes after car crashes and the cartoon came out at a weird time it came out in 1983 it, I think in the fourth season of the uh, live action show. And because of a contract dispute over merchandising, the two leads, Tom Wopat and John Schneider, close personal friends of ours, they held out because they, they thought the plots were getting bad and they, they weren't getting a cut of all the, uh, the Duke's merchandising that they were doing. So they held out. They weren't in the fourth and part of the fifth season. And that's when the cartoon came out. So what they, what they did was, let me just show you. Uh, first of all, here's the Dukes with their cousin Daisy, um, and they had Uncle Jesse. It was a family thing. They replaced them with cousins who had never been referred to before in the series, called Coy and Vance. <laughs> Look at that's like they're almost identical looking, and they didn't have any discernible character differences. They I had just... no idea that they switched it up. Yeah, the Coy and Vance they... years. But that so that was like uh, Bewitched when they replaced Darren. Right? Exactly. Yeah, but they, they, yeah, they kind of wrote them out. They like Darren's. They just didn't mention that it was a different Darren. You know. Okay, just, but this one. Okay, they came in as. Relative. They're like, oh yeah, Uncle Jesse has other cousins named Coy and Vance, and the other Duke boys are out of town in Atlanta or whatever. Okay. So the cartoon comes out, and they have Coy and Vance in the first season because they don't have, you know, Tom Wolpad, John Schneider. But then the contract gets to be, uh, gets figured out. They get some merchandising money, and the second season we got. The Animated Dukes, this is a Hanna-Barbera cartoon from 1983. Only ran one year, but two seasons. And everybody does a voice, their own voice in this, except there's always cute animals, and they're all voiced by Frank Welker. I, <laughs> I was going to guess it, but yeah, I mean, yeah. that's, yeah, no Flash, doubt. Of course. Flash is the hound dog, and Uncle Jesse's raccoon is Smokey, I believe, and... I believe that General Lee also had a voice uh, occasionally, which Frank Welker voiced. And Waylon Jennings didn't do the theme song for the cartoon. It was by this guy who did every Hanna-Barbera theme song. He did, his name's Hoyt, Hoyt Curtin. Great name, Hoyt Curtin. And uh, he did kind of a sound-alike one, but he did like the Flintstones theme, Top Cat, Jetsons, uh, Super Friends theme, Josie and the Pussycats, the Smurfs theme. So prolific Hanna-Barbera company man. It, looked, it looked like they didn't have the the confederate flag on the side of the car there i'm trying to remember if you see it or not it wasn't on the side it was on the roof oh it's on I, the roof i think you do see it in the cartoon series okay yeah you do this is the christmas episode and uh this is the, i think the series finale and the, the the cartoon the premise was that the duke boys were on like a rally they'd go all around the world they'd be in egypt one week they'd be in uh england the next they're in england here and uh, of course, it's a Scrooge tale. It's uh, a Dickens reference. And uh, Boss Hogg, 
plays Scrooge. And uh, yeah, that's it. Let's, let's jump in. Let's jump in. And let's Caitlin, slide be, in. I'll, let's slide across the, the hood into this, into this episode. Into this episode. Can you guys okay. hear Rambo barking? Is it interrupting? I don't hear him, no. I don't hear him, no. Yeah. All right. Never mind then. I'll just let him keep going. <laughs> Okay, Rambo's Caitlin's dog. If you didn't see the no, I don't think he should have said that. I think yeah. he should just <laughs> Rambo's barking. Can you, you hear Rambo barking? <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeehaw, everybody! <laughs> just a couple of hard driving roughnecks down Hazard County Way. Looks like them. They don't yeah. want no trouble. They just want to play. Just give them a race to run. Daisy are racing old boss hog clear around the world. And they gotta win that prize money so the boss can't foreclose on the farm. Naturally, greedy old boss wants the farm and the money all for himself, so he's been a cheating and a scheming every bit of the way. Just give him a race to run, generally. And yeah, that's how physics gun. works, right? Yep. Ooh, 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 we, we're gonna oh, live action some series. Fun. It's just so actively stupid. I kind of like it. How many seasons did you say? Just one or two seasons, one year. Well, it sure won't be much of a Christmas with you kids so far away. At least ways you know, smoking me or with you in spirit. I kind of want that framed photo. Well, a Christmas card Walter. from Daisy. Uh, let's see. Daisy that. says, whoever said Christmas means goodwill to all men apparently never met Boss Hogg, because while we was a-racing through England just before Christmas, we were so excited about the holiday that we forgot that Boss does his tricky scheming 365 days a year, holidays included. Ooh, ooh, Boss, them dukes is a-gaining on us again. Mm-hmm. Is that a fail? But... Way to go, Bo! Boss, them dukes done snuck right by us. Yeah, well, we're still considering what I got in store for them dukes. There ain't nothing they can do to bother me. Nothing! I just wish Uncle Jesse could be here to enjoy this with us. Yeah, instead of Boss Hog. Uh-oh, here comes old bad news. Well, I'm surprised at you. Ever since we was knee-high to a heifer, Uncle Jesse's taught us that Christmas is a time for kindness and charity towards all our fellow men, even Boss Hog. Oh, you think you're so all fired, smart, sneaking past us, don't you? Uh, oh, excuse us, boss. The boys and I were just talking. Yeah, since the rules say there's no racing on Christmas, we'd like you and Roscoe to join a little Christmas celebration. <laughs> <laughs> and you too, okay. Flash. Y'all come along. Vroom, 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 vroom. Ooh, don't that beat all, boss? Very tits in Roscoe. Very, Where very right tits in I missed that. Oh, They're in England. Doctor. In England, okay. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, what Roscoe really means is uh, thanks kindly, but uh, no thanks. Uh, we got all the plans. But, but boss, you said you was touched. Did I? Nick, yeah, ask well, another question. Go for it. Shoot. Why? Why are they in England? Because uh, they're on a ra- this- they're on a race around the world to try to uh, win the prize money to save their farm. Boss Hog is trying to foil their plans because he wants to foreclose on the for- farm. How did they get the cars overseas? Uh, there's a long prologue where you just watch a, a, a boat take it over. Oh, you um, skipped that. You, yeah. You, we, okay. When you think about, like, there's episodes where like, it goes from Egypt, then it goes to, there's like no, it, it does, they zigzag all over the world. It doesn't make any sense if you're actually planning a route to go race around the world. Yeah. This is not the route I would take. But so I, you're but saying it's... this cartoon is not realistic. <laughs> Implausible. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, but it's like the Fonz, the Fonz cartoon where they're just like jumping around through t- space and time. Right. And like this week they're in, you know, the Milky Way. And then this week we're in a different. Pl- yeah. Yeah. Okay. I get it. Yep. This is Hanna-Barbera. This is like their. Yeah. It's a, but the weird thing is the Dukes are such a Southern, like it's playing on all these Southern tropes, you know, so to, to get them in Egypt. I don't know. It could be a fun fish out of water, but there's almost no reference to them being in England other than that's where Dickens is from. But not like I'm gonna toot you if you don't get back in that car, Dickie this split. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, 
Merry Christmas, everybody. Eat, drink, and be merry. And all that other sentimental stuff you dukes get such a kick out of this time of year. Well, if you change your mind, Bobs. You know where to find us. Uh, yeah, well, bless you all. But I have some special holiday plans of my own. I got a funny feeling Boss Hog's looking... What, Caitlin? In the, I love that they're riding around yeah. in a convertible. In the, <laughs> in it. Yeah, with it a was, giant like longhorn on the front of it. It was yeah. probably too expensive to change up the animation, so they're like, "Ah, fuck it, we'll just keep it." And like Boss Hog always wears a white suit. We'll just put a fur collar on it. You know, that's yeah. all he did. Pull another one of his dirty tricks on us. On Christmas Eve, nobody could be that mean. Not even Boss Hog. <laughs> You mean this is it? This is what we're giving up the Duke's big holiday hoedown for? Well, I told you I like their slogan, pig out at the pig in. Besides, I don't want them Dukes any the wiser when we sneak out of town now first he doesn't thing have to tomorrow start. morning. Are you kidding? Christmas morning? But boss, the rule says we can't race on Christmas Day, remember? True, but that all depends on what Christmas Day you're talking about. Tomorrow, December 25th. Uh -huh. For you and them dukes, maybe. But I just happen to be partial to the Russian Christmas Day, which falls on January 6th. <laughs> but, Bosch, maybe you want to forget about Christmas, but what? Cut away to a dog's reaction. Do we have that on the bingo card? I mean. <laughs> Oh, dog reacting to something that somebody yeah. said? Yeah, yeah, that should be on a big I also I'm gonna make these my, the Russian Christmas is on January 6th. Yeah, Boss Hog found a loophole so that he could still race on Christmas because he's Is that so even crazy. true? Is that a is that a thing? George? I believe it I believe uh, Orthodox um Christmas is on New Year's, at least Greek Orthodox uh like presents are given on new year's or that used huh. to be the thing so i don't I would, know what Russian i would is. be surprised if the writers of this show did research did it wasn't that much the research. internet yeah you're right it's such a well, weird specific excuse <laughs> i am yeah. i am updating in real time the imdb goofs page for this and their <laughs> their server just exploded yeah just to also put out that the fur uh yeah i did the previous the... scene and okay good yeah okay. <laughs> keep a running list yep <laughs> You don't seem to remember, I give you last Christmas up. Now get out of my way. You, you, you know what you are? You're another that was Scrooge. Thing. Let's make oh, you, 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 you even sound like your name was Scrooge, and my name was Bob Scratchit. You mean Bob Cratchit? Him too. Well, if you don't have a car ready to race tomorrow morning, your name is Mud. Now get. How y'all like this little fella? Perfect. The muted. Oh, look. It's... What? I love the muted uh, trumpet. Oh, I thought you were saying I was <laughs> muted. No, no. <laughs> yeah, the muted trumpet is a nice touch. Yeah. Oh, look. It's beginning to snow. It's going to be a pitch yeah. about Christmas, that's for sure. Sorry. I sure wish Uncle... That's the part. That's the part where it sounds like it's going to be a bitch of a Christmas. We we watch this on VCR party. Listen to this, Caitlin. Does it sound like he says it's going to be a bitch of a Christmas? Because it it makes sense in context too. Because it's snowing already. It's going. Oh, this is going to be a bitch of a Christmas. Listen to this. Is that what you were saying, Caitlin? I, I have an addition to that. Okay, okay. Let's, let's play it once. Play it I want to hear what you said. Oh look, it's beginning to snow. It's going to be a bitch of a Christmas. That's for sure. I sure wish Uncle Jesse could be with us. <laughs> That's uh, completely what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> Only after viewing this several times did I realize he's saying it's going to be a picture book Christmas, but oh. he, he's the Southern R, so it's a picture book Christmas. So it's okay. a bitch, yeah. a bitch of a Christmas, but it makes sense in context too. It does, yeah. No, I was it's also going to point out that, um, especially on that last frame. <laughs> I love when they like they couldn't take the extra step in these cartoons to actually color the whites of yes. artists, <laughs> the characters' eyes. Yes. So they exactly. all look like they have like a bad liver problem. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yes. Uh, like, I, that's something I never ever noticed. Like, and they probably do that for most cartoons too. No, I a lot of times they they actually have white eyes. Oh, they, really? Like, Rambo did, you know, like uh, the other ones we've watched together, but. Uh, no, this is it's creepy. <laughs> Fleshy eyes. <laughs> it's going to be a picture book Christmas, that's for sure. I sure wish Uncle Jesse could be with us. Are you doing Roscoe and Boss Hog? Yeah. Nobody should be alone on Christmas Eve. Not even Boss. 
Oh, maybe if I go lie down, I can get me a proper nice sleep. No! Howdy. Who are you? I'm the ghost of Christmas past. That's it. And you and me's gonna take us a Can't little Can't believe it's on ice. Oh, no, 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 no. It's time to tip it all back into the past. Jefferson D. Hog. Hey, put me down. I'm gonna fall. Relax. When you're wonder, with me, I it's... wonder if it was, uh, I wonder if it was like $17,000 more to color in the whites of the eyes. <laughs> and they're like, nah, let's just save the money. We, yeah. this, this isn't gonna be on more than a season. Let's just save, let's save the money. No one's ever gonna revisit this in 35 years. Yeah. <laughs> No harm's gonna be fall you. That is what's the end of this dog on I suppose it's too late to tell you I get ear sick. Be quiet, boy. Cause that's all you are right now. A little boy. Merry Christmas, I Jefferson. I love the Thank animation you, Mama. of the little boss You just dog. make me the happiest little boy in the world. Well, there's me. <laughs> my mama, years ago. See, I'll never forget that moment. I was I about little to boss get my hug. favorite present ever. Oh, wow, Mama. My first piggy bank. It figures. Them sure was happy days. Uh, time to trot, Jefferson. It's we got a right. lot of years to travel. No, wait. I just want to tell my mama all the things I never had time to. Give Mama a little kiss, honey. Here you are, Mama, dearest. That'll be 35 cents, please. It's like little Lord Fountain Boy. <laughs> I would watch a spin, like a young Sheldon spinoff called Little Hog or something. Is is Hazard misspelled on the next frame? Please. Well, it's, it's two Zs. Right, but watch. Ooh. You're it's right. Like one. Uh -huh. You're right. All right, let me update. Yeah. <laughs> update. Add it to the gap list. Jefferson, for goodness sake, it's Christmas Eve. My folks were expecting us hours ago. Huh? Oh, sorry, honey doll, Couldn't but I've got to make me one either. last bank deposit for the day. <gasps> my, oh, my, that's Elsie McCoy, my first love. Yeah, I know. You were supposed to be married that very spring. Jefferson Hogg, you best pick between me and your miserable money right now. Now? Right now. Uh, uh, I got an idea. How about if we call it a tie? Oh, that's it. Jefferson Davis Hart, you and I are finished forever. I'll marry Jesse Duke and stay here. No, Elsie. Wait, don't leave me. Especially for that goody too serious Jesse Duke. It's too late now. That's how it is when women are getting engaged, right? If they have a fight with one, they just go to the next. <laughs> That's how it goes. Like, there's yeah. always a backup engagee because you have to get married. There's no, no option. That's my understanding. Way. Okay. She married Jesse long ago. Oh, please, no more, no more of this. My heart can't take the palpitation. As you wish. Just remember, what you see is what you want. Oh look, it's the caddy. Well, at least you know Boss Hog ain't flown a coop. Hey, y'all, listen. Long as we're out Christmas, Carolyn, why don't we wish the old buzzard a Merry Christmas, Duke style? Yeah, let's do it. Fine idea, Buzz. All right. <laughs> nice of them. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Just couldn't resist singing harmonies. He's like, I got this, guys. I bet it was Wopat. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, it's it's Wopat Pat. move. Yeah. Good tidings for Christmas and a happy new year. I I'll should have known it was you, Duke's down there, carrying on at all hours of the night. Oh, come on, boss. Loosen up a little bit. It's Christmas Eve. Where's your holiday spirit? Wow. Humbug. I'm saving my celebrating till I cross the finish line. In first, please. Be singing another tune tomorrow when they find out I got a thief head start on. Oh, 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 no, don't tell me. 
You got it right. I'm a ghost of Christmas present. Oh, please, no way. I gotta get my beauty sleep. Come, we're off to see some folks you know all too well. So the first uh, go the Ghost of Christmas past was like a hayseed farmer. Christmas present cowboy. What do you think Ghost of Christmas future would be in the Dukes of Hazard universe? What is the future in the actual story? Like a cloaked <laughs> figure. Oh, it's like a Grim Reaper, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, maybe he'll be a ghost cowboy. You got some time to think about it. <laughs> oh, dang it, all the hick. <laughs> Can't you guys ever use the door like everybody else? Look in that window. Well, I'm sorry, Flash, but you know how I'm much Ronald I Reagan. almost hold for me. Who? The oh, he's the cowboy? Yeah. The I can cowboy, see that. Yeah. Little John Wayne, little Reagan. Board and jelly beans. And all we can afford is some cold tea and a couple day old biscuits. Oh. Oh, you are right, Flash. It's a spirit that counts. And seeing as how boss is making us race tomorrow, I might as well give you your Christmas present now, too. Take much considering I'm broke as I can be, but at least it's something. Oh. <laughs> huh? A present for a little old me? <laughs> oh, well, thank you, Flash. This is the nicest and most beautiful present I ever got. Caitlin, are you crying? <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, well, Merry Christmas, like you and Rambo. to you. And bless this one and all. <laughs> right. And bless Boss Hall, Welker. too. Something. Best job ever. He just does animal voices. What a career. He, I bet he didn't even do, he wasn't even in the studio with them when they recorded that. I bet he just came in and just did some dog sounds and then left for the day. Probably, <laughs> yeah. He oh. He's not talking like Scooby-Doo did, you know, he's just making noises. Oh, he made bank too. He, he, he probably, probably, yeah, he got like 16 episodes done in an afternoon, I bet. Yeah, he just had to make some noises. Others, you don't it. Yeah, I say it does. I can't figure out how Roscoe Fist talked me out all that money for the tea and biscuit. <laughs> That's gonna be some Christmas party tomorrow. I just can't wait myself. Recognize these folks? Unfortunately, I do. There's the Dukes, my mortal enemy. Mm, look again. What you doing, Daisy? Just wearing denim cutoffs with your cousins uh, for Christmas. Finishing up this gift package for Boss Hog. Cakes, candy, pies, preserves, all his favorite things, too. Hey, look at there, gumdrops. My very favorite. <laughs> Say, how about if I drop in and pick up that there present a little early, huh? Just to be on the safe side. Just listen and don't be so grabby. Y'all, would you look who I found trying to stay warm down in the lobby? Roscoe! Oh, Flash, welcome. Oh, well, we was just window shopping in the neighborhood. Roof! Here, you're just in time for a mug of hot cider. So that's it. Them dukes is trying to double cross my plan to double cross them by getting that dipstick Roscoe to spill the beans. The ghost of Big Jake was right. You ain't got the brains of a summer squash. So a couple things there. One is I remember kids in school calling people dipsticks, and I thought it was a swear word. And I think that came from Dukes of Hazard. Oh, you think so? Because I've heard dipstick before. You dipstick. I've heard that. Yeah. I feel like that was the catchphrase on, on Dukes because I think they use it again here. Um, and the other thing is, like, what does he say? Something like a summer squash and Daisy had one of those Southern colloquialisms. Like, we had a job where we were writing for Southern rattlesnake hunters, and we would, I would be on Google or like on the phone with these guys saying, would you say like two weasels in a gunny sack? Does that sound like we're sitting, we're in like a penthouse office overlooking a park in Midtown Manhattan writing for Southern uh, characters Rattles, about rattlesnake rattles, hunters. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I was just like, what am I doing? Like it, it was such appropriation with like, and I, I imagine that's what the writers of this cartoon were like, too, just trying to come up with Southern sayings and just having a big list of them, you know, trying to work I, I, them in. I'd like to point out, too, that Daisy Dukes is wearing her Daisy Dukes yeah. in, in England during Christmas time. Yep, so with, just it, with her family and her cousins. Yep, with her cousins, yeah. <laughs> it's of a summer squash. 
big man. Oh, I knew it. I knew it, it was all a bad dream. It had to be. <laughs> oh, what do you think the ghost is going to look like? Mechanical bull. Good guess. Um, I'm going to say like like a ghostly, like white, like uh, old prospector kind of a Ooh. guy. Caitlin? I feel like some kind of, yeah, like a dark cowboy, like moody. Kinda. Yeah. Yeah, all in black. But... All right, let, let's see the Duke's take on the Ghost of Christmas Future. Oh, who are you? I am a fat little friend of the Ghost it's of just Christmas the same Future. Thing. All right, let's take a break. That's the Duke's Christmas Carol. By the way, this, I think I said this is the series finale. So we're watching a big, big episode. What's <laughs> did everyone? It air, did it air on her? Christmas? Do you know? A lot of these didn't air on Christmas. <laughs> You know, like they didn't get the timing right. It though. aired on like December seventeenth, nineteen eighty three. Oh, okay. I think so. Close, close fairly yeah. close. Yeah. Uh, before we get into some uh, Duke's related commercials, I wanted to um, mention that uh, a few years ago, this was like on the same trip where we do college shows, and I was had one in Tennessee, so I went to um, Gatlinburg and uh, Pigeon Forge. I went to Dollywood. And Gatlinburg is like the Wisconsin Dells of the South. There's just like a Titanic museum, a salt and pepper shaker museum. And I drove past this and I had to stop. Cooter, Ben Jones, I guess he ran for office. He played uh, the mechanic in Hazard County, ally to the Duke boys. And he has a muse two different locations of Duke's memorabilia and museum. And, uh, and also the thing that got me to pull over was indoor mini golf i love mini golf so i went yeah. in and uh here's the mini golf there's uh <laughs> you know you can see okay. meet daisy and Bo. there's some event it's uh, like the size of our office here actually yeah, i know yeah. it was the whole upstairs of the museum so this was just a few of the whole did you play by yourself with yeah. nobody else in there of course i was on tour do you have any yeah. photos of that do you have like a wide video of you just kind of playing the whole round all by yourself quietly no look uh Luckily or unluckily, nobody's shadowing me on these lonely, lonely trips to roadside <laughs> is, attractions. Is it like a four-hole course or something? No, it was nine, I think, but it was oh. several rooms. I'm just showing oh. a few here. It's, the boar's it's nest. three holes, and you have to play it three times. To, <laughs> yeah. yeah. The Boar's Nest was, I think, the local hangout spot in, from the show. That um, sounds right. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Sure. There's a uh, Cooter Balm uh, was one of the items they sold at... Uh, <laughs> The museum and fun time palace. Did you buy and one or? I didn't buy a cooter bomb. I took a picture. Okay. And this was the viewing room. One of the saddest viewing rooms here. You just see a lone man sitting here watching uh, Boss Hog got hit by a blueberry pie in this episode. <laughs> so he was just watching that in the viewing room. Was he laughing really hard and enjoying himself? Was not laughing. No, no? he was just kind of sitting there quietly watching it. Yep, exactly. Okay. Got it. And uh, here's Daisy Dukes. Daisy Dukes. This is Catherine uh, Bach, I believe her name is. Was This is her. She started a line of clothing that manufactured these cutoffs, and they got some of her framed ones that says, made them myself. And uh, so there's actually the Daisy Dukes there. There's also the General Lee. You can take a why photo. Did you, why did you get your photo taken in front of those? Like you And ask the guy who's watching TV to take the photo of you by the Daisy Dukes. And he'd be like, can't you see I'm trying to watch Boss Hog get hit by blueberry pie right now? <laughs> so what a trip that was. It's still open. Um, oh, you know, where is it? Gatlinburg, Tennessee. And there's oh. another one, I think, elsewhere in the south. But yeah. <laughs> oh, Nick, the, the life you've lived, the adventures you've gone on, the Clown Museum, Cooter's, Cooter's Place. Uh, I love a Co rich, full, <laughs> I would say urbane lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, George put together some commercials for us to watch. What do you have? Well, there the Duke merchandising went far beyond what I remembered. Saturday morning cartoons will be right back. Saturday, the Dukes are racing around the world with Boss Hall hot on their tail feathers. Saturday morning. Tomorrow on CBS. The Dukes are at Hill. The Dukes of Hazard, that is. 
with all the excitement and color of those good old boys from TV. And the Hills wow. Dukes of Hazard Shop is packed with lots of official Dukes clothes for kids. All genuine Dukes and fun to wear. And lots of Dukes toys, too. All the real thing. Dukes of Hazard. Visit Hills Dukes of Hazard Shop. Dukes fun. All at Hills low prices every day. At Hills, our Dukes are up. Here come the Dukes. Luke and Bowie. Wait, can you back it up? Yeah. Is that the anti-inflammation department store? Inflation. Oh, yeah, inflation. Chubb <laughs> <laughs> and mistake. Okay. Okay. Dukes are up. I like how you think Boss Hog should have a CPAP. You're talking about inflammation. I mean, you're, just, you're an older man. <laughs> well, I was like, I've got to go to that, that department store. I'm, I'm severely inflamed right There's now. There's a lot of cayenne, a lot of turmeric there. Here come the Duke, Luke, and Bo. This is Daisy, and away they go. From the Dukes of Hazard collection. I bet there are a lot of dirty scenarios that kids did with those... Uh, Daisy and Bo and Luke uh, dolls. I'm just guessing. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's not where I went with that. That's not where my mind went. That's where you. Well, mind you know, went. if you had Barbie dolls, you made them kiss, or you know. Did you? I my sister did. Yeah. They they were having relationships. You threw your you... sister right under the bus on that one. <laughs> she was just on the show not too long ago, and you just <laughs> threw her under the bus. You're like my sister would do it. Well, I think that's pretty common to have dolls kiss and have relationships and. I'm guessing <laughs> Daisy Duke was this in those all relationships. News to me. That's this true. I married all of my uh, action <laughs> figures to each other. You had to. Yeah, Yoda <laughs> and Arthur. up in a tree. Luke and Bo got a set her free. We're coming. Up goes Bo with a boost. And down comes Daisy from her room. All's well? Get in well. From the Dukes of Hazard collection, Luke, Bo, and Daisy. He sold separately by Mego. Look at the hair. Run. Look at Daisy's hair. Run. That's pretty amazing. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Riding along on a sunny day, you can pretend you're crossing town, but there's a roadblock in your way. Can you make it, Bobby Joe? The Dukes of Hazard Power Cycle will get me through. It's got mag type wheels with knobby tires, and you can make it spin out. And a flag that symbolizes racism. <laughs> I'll get you. You got sure grip handle Plastic bar. made in China. <laughs> and you can make it spin Better than, like, a sign that says roadblock. Like anything else that in the road that might actually be blocking it? Yeah, yeah, there wasn't a road that it was, yeah, no. Use your imagination. George, George, add that to the list. And you can make it spin out. Not again. Oh, that Duke's a Hazard Power Cycle. The Duke's a Hazard Power Cycle. With spin out lever. Assembly required. From Coleco. Hey, guys, what you reading? The Duke's a Hazard in 3D. There's a 3D comic and magic view in every special shreddy box. Yeah. What's a 3D? Here comes a big bowl of shredded. We can see your smile of delight. Oh, we shredded, crisp, crunchy fun. Mighty good, mighty big little bite. Shreddies. Sounds like some jerky. Hell, Shreddies. Yep. Next week, meet Luke Duke, Roscoe P. Coltrane, and more at Auto Rama Friday through Sunday, Cobo Hall. <laughs> See it all at Auto Rama. They don't even call them by their name, actual names. It's just here's the characters you like from TV. Now back to Saturday morning cartoons. I'd like to point out that the um, ghost from uh, at the end of that's now haunting the final ghost the is future. identical to the ghost that haunted Cass Elliot on an episode of Scooby-Doo when remember they would have guest stars and what like the, the yeah later Don seasons. Knotts the Harlem Globetrotters yeah right yeah the, I'm just mad at, at Hanna-Barbera for you know it's not like they had they were grabbing a costume out of the closet and reusing it this is a cell that they could draw anything <laughs> No, but, but I think all these but they could reuse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. But I think all these all these cartoons did that though. Like they would cost like Filmation did a lot of that with like the Brady kids, because that was like, didn't they just lift Partridge family footage and then just paint a, a, a different head on it? I mean, like that's yeah. what they would all do. You gotta save money. It yeah. is well, interesting because I feel like so far at least the backgrounds in this are, are very nice. They're actually like watercolor, like beautiful backgrounds. And yet the cells are just so phoned in. 
I mean, the eyeballs, like, what's the deal? What's I did notice that about the backdrops, too. Like, there's mm-hmm. one part where Boss Hogg was walking. I was like, oh, that back, I kept expecting it to yeah. repeat, like, uh, like you know, Flintstones, Flintstones. does. Yeah. My or understanding or is Hannah did the backgrounds and Barbara <laughs> did the cells. And clearly only one of them was putting the time in. Right. Yeah, that's got to be it. All right. Well, here's the uh, thrilling conclusion. We'll see if Boss Hogg learns his lesson. Come, Jefferson D. Hogg, and gaze with me upon the future. No, 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 it ain't fair. I warn you, this is the last chance for paying debts in the book of life. Where's Nest? There it is. I mini golfed it. What else do you see? I see businesses. Boom. Look again. This way, everybody. One free balloon with every order of shoe fly pie, free parking, and all credit cards are accepted. <laughs> There's Bo Duke right where he belongs in a clown outfit, working for yours truly. Well, yes, I suppose you could say that. And that cute little Daisy Duke with that cute little wings of our fox and me. Bet she's getting a rightful come up and stew, huh? I'll let you be the judge. Now, don't forget, Daisy, uh, when you finish up uh, here, there's uh, 200 pounds of potatoes waiting to be peeled. Okay. <laughs> Why, this is too good to be true. That leaves only Luke Duke on the counter for it. Oh, you have a feeling the animators just had a little too much fun animating that, you know, like <laughs> yeah, wildly they get, inappropriate. They get yeah. an opportunity to draw something like that, they just went for it because it's a lot of a thankless hours, probably. And, oh yeah. boy, yeah, yeah. This is a kids' cartoon, right? This yeah, is a kids' cartoon. Children. Too good to be children. That leaves only Luke Duke on the counter for it. Come and see for yourself. Hey guys, what you know? I know I wish we had the farm back. Yeah, me too. Life ain't exactly a rose garden when a feller's reduced to hauling trash. You're telling me. Yeah, now that's what I call a stroke of genius. Instead of burning rubber for the rest of his natural life, Luke Duke's gonna be burning garbage. <laughs> The soundtrack is too loud. I do feel like the mix is off, and this comes from a DVD from Warner Brothers. I can't hear a word they're saying over the the fiddles. I just think that's how it was. It was just loud in the mix. (laughs) Wow. Don't. But uh, you know what? I've listened to it a lot. You're not missing anything, so don't worry about that. (laughs) Can you can you catch us up? Like what's uh. What's happening? Yeah, he's he's, uh, he's he's seeing the future, and so far he likes it because the Duke boys uh, and Daisy are reduced to these menial tasks like garbage disposal, clowning, and um, seductively washing the floors of the boar's nest. So, gotcha. So gotcha. far, so good, but right. he has more to show him. That all depends on how you choose to live your life from this day on. <laughs> you don't understand. I like the future just the way you're showing it. Good. Then you won't mind making one last stop. Well, there's nothing to see. Can I in predict what it's going to be? Sure. It's going to be his lost love from earlier, and it's going to show her current family. Remember his lost love that he was counting the money? It's going to be her. Who married gonna... Jesse instead? Yeah. Or, or so she married somebody and she has a family and she's happy. And meanwhile, he's uh, the, still a bad guy. Okay. That's going to be my guess. It's just the heads of County Cemetery down there. Well, I don't get it. Oh. Nope. It's the exact thing that happened in the real <laughs> oh. Christmas Carol. There's, okay. no, there's no witty take on it. There's no <laughs> comedic. Uh... I thought maybe that would be the perfect opportunity to call back to his ex who was nope. mad at him for counting his money. They just stuck with the Dickens script here. I see there's some old coots beat up gravestone. Look again. <gasps> see, that's, that's me, Barry. So we're here, unloved and unremembered. No, 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 I don't want to die like that. Look, I'll give you 10% of my personal fortune if you don't let that happen to me. Hmm? 50% tax-free, what do you say? 
I'm sorry, your money means nothing to me. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> oh, no, 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 that's not what I mean. I mean, just tell me what I gotta do so I don't end up in that there grave. Give up your cheating and conniving ways and instead carry the spirit of kindness, hope, and charity with you always. Yes, yes, I'll do it. That's Jesus, right? Oh, Is goodness. that actually Jesus? I just Great wish softens. I had enough money left over for a Christmas goose. Oh, heck, Daisy, who cares? Christmas goose. Mutton stew sounds just as good. Yeah, what's important is that we all got each other. You're right. That's more than enough to be thankful for right there. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Boss Hart. Okay, Roscoe, bring her in. Do you see what I see? You better piss me make sure I ain't dreaming. Say, I bet. Sounded like you said you better piss me. Just the pronunciations are that with competing with the soundtrack. There's a lot. Do it again. Let's hear it again. So you, you see what I see? You better piss me. Make sure I ain't dreaming. Say, I bet you thought old boss hog is gonna let you not you better piss me. down on Christmas. <laughs> well, I did. Oh, knock it off, you fucking head, will you please? <laughs> what did he say? There? Did he just say you <laughs> fucking <laughs> hippie? <laughs> Wait, rewind it. I didn't off. hear it. It sounded like knock it off, you fucking hippie. <laughs> <laughs> What is going on? It's, it's gonna the soundtrack. You... It's too loud. Nice folks down on Chris. Well, I did. Oh, knock it off, you fucking head. Would you please? <laughs> That's it. What? It's 100%. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what it actually is. Oh my Last God. episode. They were just going for it. <laughs> <laughs> One more on time. Chris. Let's hear it. Well, I did. Oh, knock it off, you fucking head. Would you please? 100%. Not, knock it off, you bucket head. I think that's what he said. <laughs> knock it off, you bucket head. But the guitarist from Guns N' Roses? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm on field. Wow. Well, I did. Oh, knock it off, you bucket head. Would you please? <laughs> I mean, at ease. Uh, yeah, okay. Merry Christmas. Yeah. I don't know, though. That that's the Mr. Three, bucket of this episode. That took three tries. It is the Mr. <laughs> bucket. Yeah, put your balls in my mouth. Bitch of a Christmas. Fucking hippie. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, oh, well, thank you, little butterball. Likewise. Darned if he ain't getting the hang of it. Oh, wow. The three of those guys are oh, friends. Oh, Roscoe's with all the twins. Yeah, and these prisons are for you to open up afterwards. The scent lines are out of control on this turkey <laughs> or goose or whatever it is. It's just like, look, it's psychedelic. Yeah, and these prisons are for you to open up afterwards as a token of my ass. Um, <laughs> What's that? Some, look at that. I don't know much about. I haven't looked at a turkey in a long time, but that turkey has a. Uh, Oh, an ass. A ass. <laughs> it's one of those ass turkeys. Yeah. The dirtiest cartoon we've ever watched. As a token of my... Friendship? Yeah, right. That's it. Friendship! I still don't understand. I thought you had other plans. Oh, them? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, well, uh, oh, I just told the queen and the duke thanks for the palace invite, but we'd oh, rather yeah, share the holiday one. festivities no, with no some room. dukes. <laughs> that is closer to my heart. Oh, well, he's only here. Looking for him. Well, don't everybody just stand there. It's time for Christmas dinner. Room, room. Merry Christmas, everybody. God bless us one and all. And that's how we spend Christmas Day with he Boss the chairs? Hall. Yeah, why did he do that? Yeah, I don't know. Go back. He just lifted the chairs. <laughs> he like a strong Merry guy? Christmas, everybody. God bless us one and all. Why did they add work for themselves? Like the animators are always looking to like have somebody say, you know, say their lines off screen and to say. They it. had enough scent lines coming up from the goose. To... You know what I think it is? What? I'll tell you exactly what it is. So the backgrounds, you know, are drawn differently by a different set of people. They're drawn in watercolor here. And somebody said, there's three chairs at the table and you have five characters here sitting down to have dinner. So we have to have someone bring it. Yes, <laughs> that's it. You <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> yep. I, that's he's ba he's basically saying two chairs here. Two yeah, chairs. <laughs> this isn't a goof in the future. <laughs> Stay off IMDb, y'all. <laughs> 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 
And that's how we spend Christmas Day with Boss Hog. None of the Dukes will ever forget it either, because it's the first nice trick you ever box played on. Candy candy. <laughs> now, ain't that the nicest Christmas story you ever did hear? For once in his life, Boss Hog learned it's the giving that counts, not the taking. Ain't that right, Smokey? Just like you. Instead of taking off to play, you're giving your time to help me put away these artificial tree ornaments. What's the matter? You look like you've seen a ghost, just like Boss Hall. <laughs> things and Caitlin you're telling us before we started that your dog Rambo had eaten some artificial things as well. Yeah. What, yeah. what happened? Unfortunately we were working on our product placement found footage festival puzzle. <laughs> well and... let me grab one so I can hold one up. Uh it's yeah. somewhere around here. All right. And <laughs> our dog um just chewed up a, a lot of it. A whole lot of a whole lot of pieces. So, so do, sorry. you recovered them, but they're just kind of like mushed up now, right? They're mushed up. I mean, everyone's probably seen a mushed up puzzle piece at some point in their life, right? We generally oh. know what that looks like, like a baby chewed on one or something. Maybe baby Absolutely. The, I guess I mean, a dog, a <laughs> baby with teeth chewed on one. The thing about puzzle pieces is that they're very chewable. It's just, yeah. they're just screaming your name. You just want to chew them when you see them. So I don't yeah. blame anybody. I, hey, he, I, I noticed he completely chewed up the face of... Um, uh the like pool sh the pool guy oh pretty boy floyd yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's gone pretty he has a chewable, chewable face. face yeah he really does <laughs> hey just quickly i wanted to go over because we all know daisy dukes were, were iconic and um there's a song by the 69 boys uh called daisy dukes and i think there's people still wear them it's like uh kind of become like a like hot pants you could wear daisy dukes and that's because of course uh of the star wearing outfits like these and uh but there was more uh tv uh clothing items that were named after famous tv characters anybody recognize these giant brown glasses oh sally jesse raphael's no these are called fletchers these are uh oh. you know a lot of guys would only they just liked when a, a woman would wear fletchers it was like a, a turn on for them um the 69 boys also had a song about these oh yeah? yeah yeah the 69 boys uh this floral <laughs> floral house coats of course became known as mamas and another it's a thing that's fetishized by a lot of guys um Tell but me. uh girls you know ladies have their fetishes too from uh, tv characters so whenever somebody wears a a loud uh pattern vest we call them balkies sinbeds balkies that's oh, right okay. yeah right. yeah <laughs> Yeah. Caitlin, you'll only date people who wear balkies, right? You it's that's... true, exclusively. And also balkies with nothing underneath. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> cha cha. Eric's off screen right now wearing a balkie. Yeah. <laughs> see the little chest hair off? Uh. And of course, boring droopy sweaters uh are known as uh Danny Tanners. Wow. And that's another thing that really gets DTs fired yeah. fired up. So if you find one, if you find a tanner out there, wear it for your lover. Yeah. <laughs> George, well, uh, can you sum anything up for us today? Oh, sure. I think there's definitely a lesson here. Nostalgia, like any narcotic, can be dangerous when recklessly consumed. When we acknowledge what we enjoyed as children, we're not morally exempt from reassessing it now. So let's critically think about every cartoon whose problematic nature only became apparent to us with the passage of time, whether it be the Dukes, General Erwin Rommel's Nature Adventures, Caligula, the animated series. Who could forget? The, the hilarious house of H.H. H. Holmes. And of course, <laughs> Columbus the Lawn Dart and his New World Pals. Also yeah. problematic. If, in a variety of ways. And that's why I always say, the more you battle is twice the knowing. An wow. important lesson for a problematic cartoon. Uh, that's so yeah nice work george i always like whenever you are about to dive in what we learned you just like kind of look to the sky you kind of just like look up and you're just like just trying to just maybe it's from the heavens you're like i gotta yeah i i use the clouds as teleprompters 
Uh, <laughs> that's very inexpensive. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Look to the clouds, everybody. Um, all right, that's all. That's it. We did great tonight. I think we all did great, right? Or this morning, I mean. Yeah, <laughs> I think uh, I think the important thing is for everyone to have a bitch of a Christmas. Yeah, have a bitch <laughs> of a Christmas, <laughs> everybody. You Wait, what would you say, Caitlin? <laughs> yeah, you fucking hippie. Yeah, all you fucking hippies. Yeehaw! Happy Saturday, everybody. It's gonna be a picture book Christmas, that's for sure. Knock it off, you fucking hit.